सब ठीक है अब रिकॉर्डिंग पे दोबारा से टेस्टिंग नहीं है नहीं नहीं अब वी कैन स्टार्ट इट अब चूंकि ये बीच में नहीं है तो इट्स रिकॉर्डिंग डायरेक्टली ओके आई हैव बीन लिविंग इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स फॉर मोर देन थ्री डेकेड्स इन मेनी वेज इट हैज बीन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जर्नी द जर्नी विच वॉज particularly initially full of lot of adjustments and challenges but i feel very pleased that i was able to deal with all those challenges and was able to make all those adjustments and now i am in a stage of my life where my children they are well adjusted thank to kind lord and they also have their children our grandchildren when i look back it was not at all easy i remember the time the first year of my life here in the us when i was working in a hospital for 10 to 12 days i did not even realize that ramadan had started but now fast forward what we see here that for last almost a decade every year in our local community all the newspapers have a nice big article with some interviews of some local muslims and almost every american that i run into these days at my job they clearly know what the month of ramadan is what is the celebration after the ramadan the eid ul fitr and the other eid eid ul adha actually a coworker only yesterday somewhat hesitantly said to me ramadan kareem and then he said oh is this the way how the greetings are in the religion of islam and then we talked about what fasts are all about so we do have opportunities these days to explain to our coworkers our friends other midstream americans the beauty of islam what it really has to offer quite often jokingly i say to people i run into that i am not trying to convert them into islam but it is such a nice peaceful reasonable religion which is in my observation is based on common sense whenever i thought about any serious issue it ultimately come came down to that it did appeal my common sense so the struggle was really which started years back in philadelphia where i was under training in many ways it continued how to find like minded people by that i mean mostly people of the same faith because their number was very few so we usually used to turn towards educational institutions like colleges and universities we used to meet there we used to pray there and talk about country of origin pakistan and about islam actually in those days not many people knew what muslims were what islam was and in some ways it was not very challenging either but every now and then someone will say what is islam who are muslim and those questions what is islam and what is muslims made me and people of that generation to ask ourselves those questions 
and as such it is not surprising that many of us started learning is about islam and started practicing islam in the right way because we all came here from countries like pakistan india where we were practicing islam because that is what our parents or grandparents were doing i feel very good about saying that myself and my friends and social circle people in my social circle we started learning islam the proper way and as such we were able to guide our children and grandchildren now what is the right path how to better understand how to understand islam in the way it should be understood and deal with all the confusions and put up behind that us if i think about the struggle here in delaware it has a story of its own okay basically when we came to delaware it was in early 80s and we started asking where can we take our children for their islamic education what we learned was that there was no mosque in the whole state perhaps alaska was only other state which did not have any mosque so for all kinds of reasons it became a challenge and the challenge was that we should have a place of worship and we should have a place where our children can can get their islamic education as we moved further then other challenges came to surface which was how to help our coworkers in the midstream america to understand who we were actually who we we really were and what our religion was what were its teachings how it was different and how it was similar to the religion which most people were practicing being christianity and yes a small percentage of uh, friends and coworkers who were practicing judaism and then we also had to put in perspective that muslims are not just those who like ourselves grew up in india or pakistan there were muslims from all over the world who were here they were from different countries of the middle east and every now and then from europe or other parts of the world and what united us all was the basic teachings of islam the practical challenges were first where to take our children for their education the most we could think about in those days was a sunday school which was just like a sunday school in church related schools or some other american friends told us that they had sunday schools here which was primarily uh, obviously for christianity and christian teachings and then we found out that there were children who were getting together in goldie beacom college so we started taking our children there at times more i got involved more i felt that there was something lacking as a child developmentalist what i felt was that the parents would drop their children at the main gate and then they will come back after few hours to pick them up 
And I started asking politely to all those parents that do you think that that is all the Islamic education that your children need? And that in my personal and professional view, that was not enough. That they should get involved. They should get involved with the education, with the teachers, with the administration, and also continue the teaching that the children were receiving in school in homes too. In my position, being at one or twice I was the president of Islamic Society of Delaware, I had the opportunity to address some of those issues publicly and in a formal way in my writings in the newsletter and in fundraising activities and other informal gatherings. What we started realizing were way back that these three things were crucial. Building of a mosque, creation of a school where children can go for Islamic education and also to have a newsletter regularly to communicate to other fellow Muslims living in Delaware. Alhamdulillah, I feel very pleased to say that first time when I became president of Islamic Society of Delaware in early 80s, I was able to somehow contribute towards these efforts. I realized in those days when the number of Muslims living in Delaware was very small and these things appeared big challenges. The easier or easiest one out of those three was to start the newsletter, which we did on a monthly basis. Sometimes we couldn't even do that. So it would be every two months or every three months. But we started getting positive feedback that those who were not very involved, they at least knew what was going on in the community. Then more and more people started bringing their children for the Sunday school. It's a long story how we all went through different phases at one point, the school was moved to nearby Pennsylvania and we took our children to Cheney State University. And then there was a brief period of time when Islamic activities and activities for the children took place in a small uh, Seventh-day Adventist church that we bought in Tufkanamum. Tafkanamam, Pennsylvania. At that time, we realized that building of a mosque for our own community was very crucial. And we started doing some fundraising. At that point, Brother Yahya Hashem, who was president before me, a visionary person, no question about it, had already mobilized the community and they were able to buy a piece of land in Newark, Delaware, where at that time it was thought that it would be easy access to all the Muslims living in uh, at least Newcastle County because in those days people were not thinking as far as Dover or beyond. So that was the beginning. I still remember that emotional day when there was first time we had the ceremony to declare that we would be building a mosque. One of the sisters in the community said that these fundraisers are not going to be enough. People are not going to donate unless they actually see the brick and mortar. 
I think that was a good advice. And we took it seriously and steps were taken and we started building the present mosque, the Masjid Ibrahim. In those days, the calculations and estimates were that we needed $350,000. It seemed something like millions today because there were 35 to 40 active families. And how much could we expect from them to keep donating again and again? So what we did we started having the whole board's weekly meetings. At that time, Brother Mahmoud Abdul Rahman was the president and I was the fundraising chair and I felt very strongly and I'm pleased to say that the board accepted this idea that the whole board should become fundraising committee. At that time, we had 20 board members. And we met every week. Actually, Brother Iqbal Aziz had a, an office, a real estate agency office in Newark, not too far from the masjid. That's where we used to meet. And we used to update each other about our fundraising activities as individuals and who